Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie. I am founder of the Milo Tree app, Catch My Party. I am a business coach and a business translator. I take what's working in blogging and online business today and I break it down so you can use these strategies yourself. Before I get started, I want to invite you to join my Facebook group. It is called the Become a Blogger Genius Facebook group, and it's a really nice space on the internet. I'm in there all the time. If you want to come and connect with me and talk to me, please join. And it's a super nice group of entrepreneurs growing their businesses and supporting each other. So please join. I'd love to see you over there. For today's episode, I have Shelby Fowler on the show. She is a Facebook and Instagram ads expert. We talk about when you should run ads, how you should run ads, what's working today in ads on these platforms. If you've ever thought about what it takes and how much you're going to spend, this is the episode for you. So without further delay, here is Shelby Fowler. Shelby, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So we are going to get into ads. And just even before I pressed record, we started talking about when ads work, when ads don't. It's not a one size fits all proposition. Right. So well, before yes. we get started, will you share a little bit about your background and how you got interested in Facebook and Instagram ads? Yes, absolutely. So I started a social media marketing agency several years ago, about three years ago. And what I realized working with clients is that I loved running ads. And so I was providing Facebook and Instagram ads to clients. And I began to phase out my other services um, a little over a year ago and really focus in on Facebook and Instagram ads. And what the obsession was for me is seeing the return. So for organic social media, which I fully believe in, by the way, um, it takes a little bit of time to see the results, right? It's and You're playing long game here. And with ads, we were able to, it was like the icing on the cake. So everything we were doing organically we could scale really fast and I got to see the, the return on it. So that was fascinating to me and the nuances of ads and all the strategies and things like that. I just got obsessed with it. And so now um, we are a Facebook and Instagram ads agency and we, that's all we do. We eat, breathe, sleep, Instagram and Facebook ads. Um, and I just love, I love being able to see how it helps businesses scale quickly. So those early clients or even your current clients, like in what verticals are they, what verticals are they in? What are they promoting? Like where are you finding a sweet spot for people running ads? Yeah, so there's definitely different types of ads. So e-commerce ads are vastly different than lead generation, right? So if you had a local based business, your ads are going to look a lot different. Coaches, course creators, online entrepreneurs, online businesses, that's where who we work with. And um, their ads are going to look a lot different than e-commerce, right? So there's definitely different types of ads. And we primarily work with those online business owners. So that we love that because we can see, um, we can grow your email list we can get you super duper visible in front of your target audience. We can sell your courses. We can fill your webinars. That's what we're good at. And that's a lot of what we do, um, as well as getting eyeballs on your blog posts and just making you the number one, um, really working towards getting you to like the number one in your market, in your niche, so that people see you as a household name in that niche. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about the state of Facebook ads and Instagram ads today. 
I know that, of course, they're both owned by Facebook, and I know there's like one dashboard where you can run Facebook ads and Instagram ads, so you can kind of integrate them. But how yes. would you differentiate them? Like, what is where do you see the value and the opportunities in running Facebook ads versus, say, Instagram ads today? Yes, that's a great question. It's gonna depend on where your market is, what, like whether you should really focus on Instagram or really focus on Facebook. Primarily what we do with clients a lot of the times is we run the ad on the Instagram feed and the Facebook feed. However, what we're finding is working really well right now is when you have placement specific ads. What that means is let's say you film a, uh, you know, a vertical video really quick, two minutes or less, you make it fun. You can have like emojis around you and things like that. And you run it on Instagram stories and Facebook stories only. That's actually working really well. So again, it's like having that placement specific, they're only running on stories because you have a lot of people who are consuming especially Instagram, right? A lot of people are consuming stories right now. And I think that we're going to see that just continue on. It's going to get more and more popular. So if your market is primarily on Instagram, then definitely put more energy behind that because you can, you can even create like custom audiences of people who've engaged on your Instagram, who have sent you messages, things like that. That way you can target them with your ads and you can even create lookalike audiences uh, based on those who have engaged on okay, Instagram. Wait, before, and the same before you yeah. continue, let's just back up and talk to me. What is a custom audience versus mm -hmm. a lookalike audience? Yes, a custom audience is taking Essentially, a custom audience is using either Facebook's data base. Um, Facebook owns Instagram and, and Facebook, right? So a custom audience for people who have engaged on Instagram is going to be Facebook's data of who has liked, commented, sent you a message, um, saved, your Instagram posts, right? Or they've mess been messaging you. So it's using Facebook's data or your Facebook pixel. You can create a custom audience for people who have visited your website if you have that little pixel code on your website. So before you run ads, I definitely recommend everybody go and install your Facebook pixel. It's like a little tracking device that goes on your website, goes on your landing pages, um, and then you can it, it tracks who is visiting those those pages so that you can retarget them with your ads. Right. So once you have that pixel set up, you can go inside of Ads Manager in Facebook Ads Manager, and then you can set up custom audiences under the Audience tab, and then you can click Website Visitors. You can click click Instagram en Engagers, Facebook Engagers. You can do all of this cool stuff. Those would be custom audiences, meaning and I, I just, data. I just have to say, so this is where for business owners, it's really cool for the rest of like, as users, it can be a little creepy because people yeah. who are coming to your website are also on Facebook and they're also on Instagram. So what they can do mm -hmm. is match a visitor to your website to that same person when they are on Facebook, when they are on Instagram. So that's, yep. so it's like I take my own visitors and then Facebook knows they've now come to my site and they know in 20 minutes they're gonna be on Instagram and boom, they can show them an ad there or they can boom, show them an ad when they're on Facebook. So that's just like, that's the creepiness and also the power. Yeah, exactly. It is super creepy and super cool at the same time. I get it. <laughs> and depends on like what hat you're wearing. Right, exactly. So, okay, exactly. so that is a custom audience. And now mm -hmm. what is a lookalike audience? Yes, so once you have a custom audience set up, you can click on it and then create a lookalike audience from that. So let's say it's website visitors, okay? You click on create lookalike audience from that. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull 
people who look like those who have visited your website before. So they have similar tendencies. They have similar likes, dislikes. They have similar buying behaviors because Facebook has more data on us than I don't know what else does. It's creepy and cool. Like we were talking about, it's both creepy and cool. It has so much data on us. But those lookalike audiences can be some of your best performing audiences. So they're going to be cold. They're people who don't know who you are, but they are like those who already know who you are. They already have been on your website. You can even create lookalike audiences from people who've bought from you before or from people on your email list, right? And it's pretty simple to do this you, when you go inside of audiences create custom audience. You're going to create your custom audience. It walks you through very, it's very clear and very simple. Don't, don't be overwhelmed. And then once that custom audience is set up, you'll just click on it and create a cost, a lookalike. Got it. And again, it's kind of funny because I think we like to think of ourselves as super unique, but I'm a mother who lives in Austin, who shops at Target and Whole Foods. And guess what? Yep. There are a lot of people like me and I'm a blogger. There are a lot of people like me who do all those exact things. So as soon as you start to realize, wow, they can like almost create a clone of, there's a clone of me somewhere out there that is that has the same habits that I do. And that's the power of the lookalike audience. Mm hmm. Exactly. And it's amazing exactly. that Facebook can figure that out. Right. It's it's creepy and cool. It's creepy. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to title this creepy and cool ads just because yes. <laughs> it is. OK, so here's the big question. I'm a blogger and I mm -hmm. do DIY home decor yep. kind of thing. Does it and I monetize predominantly via ads on my site. Does it mm -hmm. ever make sense to run ads to then make money with ads? Yes. So if you had something for sale, you could do that or to build your email list. Okay, um, let's say, let's if, say just, just for my ad income, I have an ad network. They show ads on my site. Does it ever make sense to run ads to my blog post to to get visitors seeing my post yes so we've done this with the client before what what we have is she has a blog post about now she blogs about financial stuff um financial stuff for business owners very niche right um and this and this particular blog post was a uh, tips and tricks for etsy shop owners and people were like hand, handmade, handmakers, um, that kind of stuff. So she has this blog post and we run ads to it for about 10, 20 bucks a day. We get tons of visitors and then people are on that page and then they click on the ads that are on that page. She makes money, right? So it's like a whole little circle. And then what she'll do is we'll switch up the blog post every month or so right so she picks a blog post that's already doing pretty well and she knows like hey people are interested in this people um there's there's a lot of views on this already and i think that's important to know what's working and then you again facebook and instagram ads are the icing on the cake it's just going to amplify what's already happening mm -hmm. so see if it's working if you have a blog post that's doing really well you know, even throwing five, 10 bucks a day um, and testing it out could be super beneficial. But I would argue that because we monet, we have a site called Catch My Party, we monetize via ads, that we end up upside down, meaning we are making a dollar for every thousand people who come to that blog post. And mm -hmm. we could not run at, you can't in our, in our math, make that make sense unless, and this is what you were alluding to, unless there was something else we were looking to do on that page. For example, get an email list, uh, an email sign up, sell a product, do something, but just to run ads, to make money with ads, you don't make enough with your ad network for that to make sense because you're gonna pay a dollar a click let's say mm -hmm. from a Facebook ad 
to my website where I'm making a dollar for every thousand clicks. Gotcha. Yes. So that particular client, she sells spreadsheets, she sells courses. So ultimately she gets them, she retargets them later. So for most of you then, and again, what you were, we were kind of bringing up is having them join an email list or something, it might be a lot more beneficial for you because then you can be emailing them every time you have a new blog article up, right? Hey, did you catch this week's, you know, this week's article, this week's blog post? Um, so if you have the ability to add that onto a page or they can get a, some sort of freebie, um, you can have a checklist or a little guide. I tell this to people a lot when they are creating freebies. I want you to think about who your ideal customer or client is or um, fan, if you call them fans, because busy people don't read eBooks. <laughs> so if you are targeting busy people, don't make a like 200 page ebook. We're not going to read it. Okay. Give it to us straight. And I think a lot of people are busy and we're, you know, we're targeting people that are busy moms, busy business owners, um, people who have a lot going on in their lives right now. Everyone has a lot going on in their lives. So checklists, guides, things that are going to give them quick wins are always good. And especially if you have content already on your blog, just repurpose it. You don't have to create anything fancy, you know, just repurpose something that you already have into some sort of download. Right. So let's walk through a couple scenarios and you can tell me how you would come up with an ad strategy for, let's say I sell a course on, um, on organization. Okay. And I sell it to moms with small children. Okay. And my house is a mess. And it's yep. a, let's say it is a six week course and I sell it for $200. Like I come to you, I've got a blog, I've got an email list, let's say of 2000 people and I want to sell my $200 course. And I say, all right, Shelby, tell me what to do. Okay. Oh, wait, and so, my young moms are on Instagram predominantly. Okay. So what I would suggest here is <clears throat> that you will want to, I would get them into a Facebook group because moms, young moms like community and being a young mom can be very lonely. So Facebook communities, mom Facebook communities groups are doing really great. They are growing. Mom groups are some of the most engaging groups because they have questions. They're like, there's paint all over the house. Things, there's mishaps every day. You have something to talk about all the time, right? I have two little ones. I get it. I'm in mom groups. So what I would do is I would get them into a Facebook group where you do some sort of um, where you're creating a community, but you're also pitching your course every single week. Okay. And the reason why I would do it that way and not get them on a webinar or something like that is because your webinar cost per registration is going to be about six to $10 per registration. So you're going to end up not being profitable unless your course is over really 700 bucks. If wow. your course is over $700, you could be profitable. Anything under that, um, you're going to most likely lose money unless you had some massive um, warm audience, like you were Oprah Winfrey or something, right? Or you have, you know, if you had a 20,000 email list and these people were super hyper engaged, I would say, you know what? Try a webinar. Let's do it that way. Most of us are not there. So, Get them into a Facebook group. So and what wait, I how is, am I getting? So, okay. How do I get people into my Facebook group? Yep. So you'll want to create a landing page where you have a picture of yourself, maybe a video at the top. And you're saying, hey, this group I've created for moms. And we're learning how to get our stuff in order, how to make, uh, you know, mess it, like how to 
organize all the things, all the toys, all the blah, blah, blah. Plus you're getting support. We have live calls every week where you can ask organization questions. I have tips and tricks in there. And we have meet your mom Wednesdays where we have like live calls and we get to all kind of chat and tell funny stories about motherhood. So you want to click the link to join below and what you want them to do is put in their name and email and click join. And the reason why you want to do that is because then you get their email address. Mm. And so you could even offer like, by the way, not only are you going to join the community when you click the link below, I'm going to actually email you a welcome email to show you just how to plug into the group. Cause sometimes we join these groups and they're overwhelming and we don't know all the things yet. So once you hit that button, I'm going to email you with like the next steps going forward to get the most out of this community. So then you'll have an email that goes out to them immediately that says, welcome to the Facebook group, blah, 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 blah. Make sure that you tune in. I go live on Tuesdays, whatever. Okay. You're giving them what they're getting from the group. And then you'll, you'll get them joining your Facebook group right then too. So then you can approve them. Then you'll want to have a marketing strategy inside of that Facebook group. So uh, post every single day. You're going to want to welcome new members. I like to, I have, I use this, I use a very similar strategy for my own business and I message everybody who joins and I welcome them because there's a lot of, and I get it. I have a lot of, I have over 2,100 members right now. Um, it's a lot, but you can use a program called group leads is really great. Um, and you can automatically approve members. It'll send them a message automatically. It'll tag them in a welcome post just just to set you apart from all the other groups, right? They're getting that extra like love from you. Um, that's what I would do. And then I would go live. I would talk about it. I would have one of your membership questions joining the Facebook group. I help busy moms get their house in order and get it organized. Whatever your kind of statement is here. How do you help these people? And do you want me to message you? with how I, I might be able to help you. You wanna ask, tell them how you could help them and say, would you like me to message you for more information? And they're gonna say yes or no. What I have found is that most people are gonna say yes. And then you message them and you tell them about your course because they've given you permission. Right, and so you're messaging them on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. You're not like emailing them. I mean, you're doing a welcome email, but otherwise you're really interacting with them on the platform. Correct. Now, are you running ads to the landing page? Correct. That is where you're running ads to because you're not allowed right now to run ads to a Facebook group directly, Um, which is so funny to me. I say this all the time, but I'm like, Facebook, you don't want me to give you money to promote your own platform? Why? That doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make sense. But and nonetheless, if you send them to a landing page anyways, you can pixel them and there's all that good stuff too. So send and them to your landing page. And how much w- should I then plan on spending per mm-hmm. new Facebook group member? It's going to depend on your market. Here. Okay. So I would start with 10 bucks a day and watch it over a couple of days. And then you want to maybe increase it. So 10, 20 bucks a day, watch it grow. We're doing this with several clients, the same strategy to get their groups going. Yep. Because they do a lot of their sales out of a Facebook community. Um, and you know, we're getting, we're spending like 30 bucks a day. So it's just going to depend on your niche, your market, all of that, but um, definitely I would, I wouldn't go less than 10 bucks a day. Got it, but how many, and about how many new members are you seeing per day? So I would expect you to spend about less than $5 a day per person, ideally. So if you're spending like 10 bucks a person, then you need to figure out your targeting, You may need to tweak your ad copy or your ad graphic a little bit. Um, But for those of you with smaller ad budgets, run video ads because video ads are the biggest bang for your buck. And if you do that, you're going to get better costs and you're going to get more people joining. So 
Um, usually for lead magnets, we like to stay around $3. Right now, ad costs are really good at the time of this recording um, because we're after holiday season. Holiday season ad costs go up. So if you're listening to this and it's like, you know, October, November, December, you're going to expect to pay a little bit more because you're competing against the big guys, you know, these huge retailers that are running ads and spending millions. So um, just to give you kind of a little bit, you want to be under $5 for sure. Per acquisition. Correct. As we are talking about ads on Facebook and Instagram, I want to explain why you should install the MyLoTree pop-up app on your blog to grow your organic Facebook and Instagram followers. Remember, your job is to put stuff out there and test it. And then when it works, that's when you put money behind it. Well, how do you know if something works? If you have a lot of followers, your content gets shown to a lot of people. More followers, easier it is to learn. So head to MyLoTree, sign up for your account, install your pop-ups on your blog, grow your followers on Facebook and Instagram effortlessly and get your first 30 days free, no risk. And now back to the show. When you say video ads, do you mean video ads on Facebook? Do you mean video ads on Instagram? Is there a difference? Like what's working on one platform versus the other? Yes, great question. So I would run um, timeline ads. So just, so you're gonna film um, you know, horizontally on your iPhone or smartphone, or you could do it on your computer even. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need to go buy a fancy camera, um, you know, or if you have one, cool, but you don't have to go use that. Um, and then you're going to keep it two minutes or less. That way it will also be on Instagram. Okay. And then you can run this ad as you can actually run it as automatic placement. When you set up your ad, you can run it as automatic placement, which means that Facebook's going to decide where it's going to perform best and then where it performs best, it will send more of it there, right? So you're just giving Facebook a little bit more power, but that is, that's great. Facebook likes when you do that. And the thing about it is that Facebook slash Instagram, right? They make money from advertisers. So don't forget that they do want your ads to do well, because the more you, the more success you see, the more money you're going to spend on their platforms and the more money they're gonna make. So I say run automatic placements and that's what it's automatically set as unless you go in there and tweak it, okay? So now, if you were to run a story ad, those do really well too. So we've been testing this with clients a lot in the last couple of months and that is story specific placements, which means we film vertically And I actually like to film it directly in Instagram stories. And instead of posting it, I actually save it. And then I email it to myself and then I upload it into ads manager and run it as an ad. So what I do is I will go into Instagram. I will film a story and I'll just be like, Hey guys, Uh, let's say it was for this particular client who is, you know, has this Facebook group. Hey guys, I have an amazing community for moms just like you who, you know what, life's a mess. And especially now, right? These kids, they're just always there. And so I have this community. You don't want to miss out. It is exclusive. You're going to get exclusive tips and tricks on organization. And I share recipes in there and blah, 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 right? We have mom meetups, virtual mom meetups. Um, It's so much fun swipe up to join right now it's completely free and i don't want you to miss out because you don't have to do this mom thing alone right they're gonna see that and they're gonna go i want to join so they're gonna swipe up they go to your landing page and then they would join that way um those ads what how you run them you're gonna go into ads manager and then instead of having automatic placement you'll click manual placement which is right under it and then you just unclick everything but the stories so You want it to only go on Instagram stories and Facebook stories because you're going to tell them at the end of the video to swipe up, right? Because it'll give you that swipe up feature. So So you get swipe up. You get swipe up if you pay. Yep. Got it. Exactly. 
Got it. So it feels like marketing today is very personal. It is not so polished. It's more personal than polished. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I would agree. I think we're over all the the filters. It, yeah, exactly. We want raw. We want real. Like that's we're just over all of the polished, all of the filters. Um, we want real people, real stuff. I think that makes a lot, a lot of sense. Okay, let's say now I am an e-commerce brand. I've got a small Shopify. I sell jewelry. How okay. would you set up ads for me using Facebook ads and Instagram? Yeah, so I would absolutely use your list of people who have already purchased. Um, so I would go ahead and pull the CSV file. So go into your Shopify and look at your list of people who bought and then download it, <clears throat> pull it as a CSV file. And then you're going to upload it into Ads Manager. So when you go into Ads Manager, you're going to click on Audiences. You're going to go click on Create Custom Audience. And then you're going to upload your email list right there. And then you're going to name it like Jewelry Buyers from this time to this time, right? So you kind of have an idea when you see it in there. Um, you know what it is. I see a lot of times we you don't name it correctly. And then you're in there and you're like, what was this? I forgot. So just make sure you name it something you're going to remember it. Then what you're going to do is create a lookalike audience. So again, you just click on that audience, click lookalike, and then you can pick the country and the age range and all that, right? So you click, pick the country, create lookalike audience, and then I would run ads to that lookalike audience. If you know that your, if you know that your lifetime value of a customer is a lot higher than like their initial purchase, right? Let's say that you're, they, bought something that's 50 bucks and let's say your ad average order value is about $50, um, but your lifetime value of a customer is much higher, then you can, um, you can retarget the people who've already bought from you because they know that you know that they're gonna likely rebuy. Now they want earrings, now they want a bracelet, now they have, oh, these are cute rings, right? So run ads targeting the people who have already bought and you're gonna change your, ad copy, right? The text portion of your ad to be something like, Hey, haven't seen you in a while, right? Something like that, where it's acknowledging that they've already been a customer. So when they see it, they're like, Whoa, creepy. How do they know? But <laughs> creepy, but cool. <laughs> creepy, yeah. but cool. And they're going to click on your ad, right? And then you're going to run ads to that lookalike audience of people who look like your buyers. And, and that's going to look a little bit different because they haven't already bought from you. So your ad copy is going to say something a little bit different. Um, and again, you can use product shots to do really well. Video ads do really well. If you have a, like a video of someone, you know, putting jewelry on and like straightening it up, something like that, try it out. And again, testing is your friend. So test videos, test photos, product shots, and see what performs best. You want to pay per customer acquisition, you want to pay 30% of your average order value. So if your average order value is $50, then you want to spend 30% um, of that per customer acquisition. Does so that make okay. sense? So let's though, I want to break this down. So first of all, what I hear you saying, and I believe this, is if you've already acquired a customer, that customer is super valuable to you because chances 100%. are they've gone through the buying process and if they like your product, they are more apt to buy more. So a, 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 a acquired customer is so, so don't think it's all about getting new people into your funnel. Mm. It's loving on the people who have already gone through that and letting, you, letting them know how much you appreciate them and that you want to build the relationship not you not necessarily with the new customer but with the existing customer. So I think that is a big big point. Secondly, yes. you can spend there's this concept of the flywheel and we all hope to get the flywheel going. You know, think of like your spin class. And 
usually what you want it, you want it if, for example, you're making money with ads, then your budget should be infinite. You should just keep fueling that flywheel if it's spinning off money for you. Now, the way to know if that's working is you have to think about, well, what is a customer worth to me? Now, the one thing you said was that like, you have to think about, so I sell jewelry, let's say, and my average purchase is $100, but I also have to take out certain expenses, like I'm buying gemstones and I'm doing all this. So if you buy something for $100 from me, I'm going to make $50. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, are you saying that I can spend a third of the $100 or a third of the $50? I'm saying if your average order value is like $50, then you can spend $15 per customer acquisition. And if your lifetime value of a customer is really high, you have people constantly buying your stuff over and over and over, then you may be able to spend a little bit more comfortably because you know you may lose a little bit of money up front, but you actually make it long term on the back end. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so it's you rev- so you're saying bit. revenue, not profit. You mm-hmm. can spend a third yep. of what you make in revenue versus a third of what you're making in profit. Got it. And the difference with revenue and profit is profit, you're taking out your expenses, but you're saying a third of revenue. And so that's yep. the thing. So let's say then uh, my my customer is $50, spends $50 with me. Uh, let's say lifetime, let's say the lifetime of a customer is $100. They're going to spend $100. I can spend up to $33 to acquire a new sale or a new customer. So you would, $100, you would want to spend that first initial average order value. So if you're spending if they spend $50 with you and you take 30% of that, that's 15 bucks. So you really want to keep your, your cost per customer acquisition with ads about 15 bucks. Oh, okay. Even um, if the if, lifetime value of this customer is higher. Yes. But let's say though, that maybe it's even more high. Like, let's say I would say, if, you know, they're going to end up spending several hundred dollars with you. You might, you play it by ear, know your numbers. This is why it's like so important to know your numbers, know your overhead. What are you gonna walk away with being profitable at the end of the day? Um, and then, you know, you might be willing to spend a little bit more. You might be willing to spend up to 50%, right? Of that original average order value. When they first order from you, what is that average, cost? like how much do they spend with you, right? Um, And so you might be willing to even break even in some cases if, again, they're spending enough money with you because they reorder and they reorder, reorder. Absolutely. Okay, first I just have to ask you, whenever you're doing video, you always need to add captions. Am I right? Because people do not listen to stories. They read stories. They interact with stories that way. Yes. So I will say with Instagram story and Facebook story specific ads, that's not ne- not necessarily the case um, because they're watching stories and people are talking all the time. Um, when you're on a, when you're on the timeline, so an Instagram timeline or feed, your Facebook feed or timeline, you definitely want to have captions. It's like 80% or more of people don't even watch your video with the sound on. So I like to use a program called Clipscribe um, and you can upload your video into there and it creates this like cool little video with this like bar up top where you could put a headline and a subheading and then your captions auto generate at the bottom. It's not very expensive to buy like a year pass to it um, considering how much time it's going to save you because you don't have to like manually type out, you know, captions and stuff. Um, and it automatically kind of designs it and you can just mess around with the fonts and stuff. It's really easy to use. That's what we like to use. We actually use it for our high six and seven figure entrepreneurs. That's the exact program we use. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely use captions, um, because especially for feed and timelines, because most people aren't going to listen to you. Yeah. But you can though, just do you talking in a story. You don't necessarily Correct. need it for stories? Correct. Okay. Here, here's, here are two more questions. One, 
how much should I be willing to spend to learn? Because I know in the beginning, especially, you're trying all these different things, Mm. you're testing all these different things, and you have to assume that in the beginning, there's investment that has to go into it so that you know what's working. So what do you tell clients? Like, be prepared. This is what the investment is going to be. You're not necessarily going to see you know, you're not going to go spend your first hundred dollars and then boom, there's $50. Like how does, or there's $150. What do you say to your clients? So typically we don't take on clients that we know aren't going to be profitable. So we run the numbers with them and we typically work with clients who already have a very strong organic marketing strategy. So their organic marketing is on point. They are posting regularly. They have communities built, they have audiences built, they, you know, they have fans, of, you know, around their business, around their brand. Um, that's typically who we work with. And we run the numbers first, because I don't like to take clients on that we're going to lose money. That's not fun for anybody, right? You're going to not, you're not going to like me. It's going to be, <laughs> it's not going to be a good, it's not going to be a good exchange of energy. So what, that's what we do. I will tell you, that when you start to test ads, don't test all the things at once because then you're gonna get frustrated. Um, Wait until you have a solid offer before you run ads to it. Okay, so what I mean by that is let's say going back to the blog article um, example, if you have a blog article that's already doing really well, if you put a a little bit of money behind it and let's say people and you have a form there where people can sign up for your lead magnet right there, um, you're probably going to do pretty good, okay? Like, because it's already doing well, all right? And that's if you have that lead magnet registration on that page. Let's say, or let's say you have a lead magnet and you have promoted it organically on social media and people are giving you great feedback on it. You're get, People are really interested in it. And so if you put ads behind that, you know, it's probably going to turn out pretty good. And you're going to spend about three bucks, um, a lead on that. If you have a webinar that's already doing really well or a masterclass presentation, something of that nature, it's already doing really well. You've run it organically. If you put ads behind it again, it's just the icing on the cake. Ads are going to amplify what you're already doing. Ads do not fix a broken sales problem ads do not fix um you know a business that doesn't work or a blog that sucks (laughs) so so i always recommend that you have that foundation first and that way when you do run ads you have more confidence right you have more confidence going into it and i think a lot of times especially if you're wanting to do your own ads and the first time you, even if you hired somebody, the first time you hire someone to do your own ads, you're like, you're nervous a little bit. It's a little overwhelming and investing money, hoping for a return can be kind of scary, right? So if you already have something that works and it's flowing, people are giving you good feedback on it, then your chances of success are way better. And you can go into ads with a lot more confidence. So I don't know if that really answered your question, but if you're going to test, um, test audiences first, (laughs) that's my test your audiences first. Okay. Well, first what I hear you saying, and I could not agree more with this is you need to show that it's already working. So it's not just a theory or Mm. it's not one of these, it should work. You need to know it's already working before you ever put money behind it. And then you get to tweak it and still you're going to learn and you might do something and it doesn't quite work. But if you already know what you're saying is the fundamentals are there and then it's like putting a little bit of rocket fuel behind it or gasoline, all of a sudden you can start to see that flywheel spinning quicker, but you have to get the flywheel going before Mm -hmm. you add the money. Yep, exactly. Okay, Okay. so and then what do you mean by the first thing you test is audiences? So when you run ads, the first one to two weeks, you want to test audiences. The same exact ad to like 
three to four different audiences. So try, you know, maybe it's, you're going to retarget website visitors. Okay. People who have already visited your website, that's one audience, right? And then another audience could be a couple of cold audiences. So let's say that you are a jewelry business and your ideal customer is somebody who shops at Target and Whole Foods. Uh, then you can run an ad to people, to women specific in a specific age range who shop at Target and Whole Foods, right? And then see, see how that does. Um, and you're going to target, you're going to create three to four different audiences, and then you're going to watch which ones do the best. Again, same exact ad, same copy, same graphics or video. And the only difference is the audiences. That way, you know, what, which one of these audiences is, is liking your offer the most. That way you don't waste money long-term on these audiences that aren't even interested in what you have to offer. So A lot of people will just kind of turn ads on and cross their fingers, but that first month of running ads is going to be a lot of testing. So you want to definitely test your audiences so that you know, even though you may think these people are my people, they might not actually think that they're your people. So the only way to know that is to run ads and see, um, you know, in in ads is to run the ads and see if they're responding. Are they clicking? Are they buying? Are they registering? Are they signing up to join your Facebook group? What are they doing? Or what are they not doing, more importantly? So you can turn those ads off after a couple of days. Um, You know, after five, six days, you're not seeing any good return on some of those audiences. Turn the ads off. Got it. Do you ever suggest somebody boost a post in Facebook? You know, you put a post on and it says, boost it. What is your thought about that? No, we don't boost posts. Boosting posts is a waste of money. And the reason why it's like a fake ad. And a lot of people are like, oh, I've run ads before. You've just boosted posts posts most of the time. So what you want to do is you actually want to create your ad inside of Facebook Business Manager. Um, and then you'll click on Ads Manager right inside of there. And that'll take you to ads manager, which I want to emphasize this is different than the ad center when you're on Facebook, on your Facebook business page. You can click on ad center and it'll show you all the posts you boosted. Again, that's not real ads. Those aren't real ads. Um, You have very little control over who sees those, what happens with them. It's not good. You're not going to get a good ROI. Most of you, it's like you might as well drive on the freeway with, um, you know, a bunch of money in your hand and roll down the window and throw it out. Like that's about (laughs) how great it is for you. It's not. So don't do it. Go inside of Ads Manager, create your ads there. Again, Ads Manager, Ad Center, very different things. Okay. And my, my final question could I do this myself or do I need to hire somebody like you? How complicated is this really? So great question because I think a lot of people want to know how to do it. And I think it's a good idea to know the basics before you hire somebody so that you know if they're doing it correctly or not. If you hire somebody to do it for you, somebody good is gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars in addition to your ad budget. So what I like to tell people is if you're ready for that investment and you know that you're gonna get an ROI, um, then hire somebody to do it for you because that frees up your time to be able to go focus in areas where you're better at, right? That you can scale your business in other ways and let the pro um, like myself and my team or anybody else that is a, a professional at this, um, go do their thing, right? They can run your ads. They'll do your ad creative. They'll manage it. They'll do all of that. And they'll watch it like a hawk every day, all day to make sure that you're getting the best results possible. Now, if you're not ready to make that investment of let's say several thousand dollars a month, because that's ultimately what it's going to cost you. You're going to have to spend a couple thousand in ads, a couple thousand in hiring them, Um, for the month. So you're walking away, you know, four or five grand in. So 
if that's not you yet, then learn how to do it yourself. Now, there are lots of courses out there. There's YouTube videos, all of that. But here's what I want to tell you about that. YouTube videos, a lot of them are outdated or they're created by people who don't really know what they're doing. And it's hard to find the right thing when you're not even sure what you're looking for either, especially when you're new, you're like, I don't know what I don't know. So it's hard to go search for something and you're like, I'm not sure if this is right. And there's so much different information out there and different strategies that people are going to share. And a lot of them are not going to be for you, but they're not positioned as if this, this strategy isn't good for these types of people, or it's only good for these types of people. They just make it broad because they want as many viewers as possible. So I want you to be careful with what you consume on YouTube. The other thing is courses. There's lots of courses out there and you can find some that are really inexpensive and some that are, you know, on the higher ticket price offer, right? Um, I do have a program that teaches Facebook ads and it's not a course because I don't believe in courses when you're learning something like this, because I think you need that support. So I think you need somebody holding your hand, walking you through the process because you're going to get overwhelmed otherwise. And you're going to, you're going to need that support. You can watch all the videos, but who's going to show you how to do it. And when something happens, when your pixel, you know, isn't firing right away and you have questions, who are you going to turn to? There's no support. There's no, um, there's no, you know, person, human there to help you to hold your hand. And so I have a program for that called Vampire Ads Academy. And so it's a 12 month program. We teach you how to run ads and we show you how to do it. We have weekly calls that you can hop on and get help with ads managers. So they're people who work on my team in my ad agency and you get templates and you get an ads coach inside. So somebody who checks in with you weekly and you have a one-on-one -on -one call with them every month, plus all my ads training. So I, if you're wanting to learn how to do it in a course, you just want to pick up a short, sweet course straight to the point. There's lots of them out there, but if you want a little bit more support and you want someone to hold your hand through the process and tell you like, Hey, this looks good. These ads aren't performing well. Let's tweak and adjust them. You want that, you want that um, done with you kind of vibe, then definitely look into Vampire Ads Academy.
how quickly is it evolving and changing? So like, let's say you teach something now in six mm-hmm. months, is it all going to be different? Is it yeah. really similar? Like how are, how quickly is Facebook and Instagram, how quickly are they evolving their platform and their ad offerings? That's a great question. It's evolving all the time and some like sometimes weekly. And that's why this is all we do is Facebook and Instagram ads, because it's a lot, (laughs) it's a lot to keep up with. And especially right now with like the iOS update. So iPhone coming out with its new update that's affecting audiences and retargeting and some stuff with ads. Right. So we are like navigating with our clients and with our members inside of our program, how to make sure that you're safe and you know verifying your domain inside of ads manager is a big thing that everybody needs to do right now um but we i think it's very important because you never know when all of a sudden iphone comes up with an update and you now can't track people that click on your website right we never know when that stuff's gonna happen it just happens and so we have to kind of always keep our ear to the the ground if you will like knowing what's gonna happen um I would say that most training is probably going to be pretty spot on if it's, you know, created within the last couple of months, but something created last year isn't going to be, isn't going to be right anymore. It's so interesting because that's what I would say is I feel like it's continuing to evolve and that they are continuing Mm -hmm. to push out new products or certain things that worked before don't necessarily work now and that in a weird way, you kind of have to stay on top of it in addition to running your business. And that is where it gets tricky. Right. It's like you need to have like a a master's degree in ads in addition to all the other hats that you wear. Right. Exactly. And as a business owner or a blogger, you're wearing a lot of hats, right? You're doing a lot of things. So... It definitely is. If you don't have like a sidekick who's telling you what's new, what you need to do and keeping you updated, um, or if you don't have somebody that you've hired to kind of just take it over for you, it's definitely overwhelming to go at it solo. That can be super overwhelming and it gets complicated. Especially if you're running so many different campaigns. Yes. So. For sure. Well, Shelby, this has been so enlightening and I feel like you are right there on the cutting edge of what is working and I love that you've been able to share all of this and I just want to reiterate what you said right now people want people to show up as real people yes don't have to be so worried that your video is so highly produced show up authentically and people respond yeah absolutely How can people learn more about you, reach out to you? What is the best way? Yeah, you can go to my website, which is fempiremedia.com. That's F as in Frank, E-M-P-I-R-E, media, M-E-D-I-A.com. That's my website. You can find all things about what I do. Um, You can learn about Fempire Ads Academy there. um, And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. Well, Shelby, thank you so much for being on the show. You're you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope you guys liked this episode. For me, I had two major takeaways. One is look for what's already working in your business, and that's what you want to lean into. I preach this all the time. And two, be willing to show up and show up a little raw because people respond to that. And I want to remind you to join my Facebook group. It's called the Become a Blogger Genius Facebook group. You might be on Facebook, I don't know, in 10 minutes. So while you're there, just search for it and join it and come say hello. And let me know that you're listening to the podcast. And I will see you here again next week. (laughs) 